Welcome back to another Advent of Code walkthrough video. Today we'll be looking at 2022 Day 8. So before we get into today's, I just want to let everyone know that uh, tomorrow's video will be coming out a lot later than usual. I have a final on Friday morning, and so I need to get up early for that. And so I'll be going to sleep immediately after solving tomorrow's problem. So Day 8, Treetop Treehouse. So we have a grid, and the grid represents the height of each tree. And we want to know what is the number of trees that are visible from outside the grid when looking directly along a row or column. So here's a height graph of each of the trees. A tree is visible if all of the trees between it and some edge are shorter than it. And we only look along a row or a column. So for example, this 5 here is visible from the right because all of these trees are shorter than it. This 3 is not visible because it has a tree that is at least the same height all around it. So given this grid, how many trees are visible? So that's our test data, that's our regular input. So this one's actually uh, quite convenient for the input format, to be honest. So we take open zero dot read dot split lines, that gives us um, our lines of input, and then we just do map int over x for x in that. I guess more accurately would be for each line. And we just turn that into a list as well. So that's our grid, and it's a uh, 2D array of integers. So now in order to see um, if it is visible, we basically just run all four directions. And I'm sure there's probably a smarter way to do this, but I couldn't think of it during the contest, so I just, just uh, basically copy-pasted in every direction. So we need to keep track of how many trees are visible, so we'll have an accumulator like that. Uh, for each row index, so for r in range length of grid, for c in range length of that row, we'll look in all of the directions. So if all of the, so let's just do all four and join them with ors. So going to the left, in other words, descending column, if all of the trees to its left, so uh, all grid along the same row and then the specified column are less than k, and we'll let k be the current tree, where x is all of the column indices from 0 up to c minus 1, or sorry, just up to c exclusive, like so. So this means if all of the trees to the left are shorter, or if all of the trees to the right are shorter, so that iterates from the next column up to the end of the grid, or all of the ones above it are shorter, so grid x at the same column are less than k for x in range r like so, or all of the trees below it are shorter, so x c less than k for x in range starting from the next row going down to the bottom of the grid. Uh, and then we just add 1 to t like so. And so that gives us the correct output. The first part is relatively simple. The second part is a bit more annoying. So now we want to get a tree that has good uh, viewing distance of other trees. So to measure the viewing distance, we look up, down, left, and right uh, from our tree and stop if we reach an edge or if we reach a tree that is the same height or taller. In other words, it blocks our vision. And if a tree is on the edge, one of its viewing distances will be zero because it can't see any trees along the outside. So in this example, this five here has a viewing distance of one above it because it can see this tree and then there's nothing past it, a viewing distance of one to its left, a viewing distance of 2 to its right, and a viewing of distance of 2 underneath it. And its scenic score is determined by multiplying these viewing distances together. So this tree has a viewing distance of 4. The optimal one in this grid would be this tree, because it has a viewing distance of 2 to the left, right, and above, and has a viewing distance of 1 below. So its scenic score is 8. So on your map, what is the highest scenic score possible? For this one, I also more or less just brute forced it. So um, let's keep track of the four directions, A, B, C, and D, all initially starting at zero. So let's go left first. For X in range, so now we can't do this 
because that would look from left to right. Since we need to find the first tree that blocks us off, we need to go from right to left. So starting at the uh, next column to our left, going down to zero, including zero, so down to negative one exclusively, and each time jumping by negative one. So that loops backwards from C minus one down to negative one, excluding the negative one itself. Um, so each time we go to the next tree, we increase our A counter. Let's, let me name these a bit better, actually. Um, left, right, up, and down. So we'll increase the left counter, and if this tree is the same height, then we exit our loop. Now we just need to do this for all four directions. So going to the right, and then going up, and then finally going down. And now we just need to uh, set t to the maximum of the current value and the scenic score of this tree a times, sorry, up times down times left times right. So overall the second part actually isn't all that bad either. Um, I had a bit of trouble with it live during the contest, but that's only because of silly one-off bugs. So if you did have a smarter solution for this part, please do let me know in the comments and I'd be very interested in seeing. Otherwise, I just found it faster during the contest to just spam out all four of these cases instead of trying to think of a smarter way of doing it. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something, and I'll see you tomorrow for day nine.